News Channel Nebraska, a vision of Mike Flood that became a reality. Headquartered in Norfolk, covering news, weather, local sports, and events. To tell the story of News Channel Nebraska, let's go back to the start. Well, in 2002, uh, US92 started partnering with KTIB, the NBC affiliate in Sioux City, and we began generating a lot of video news, and, and I think that really helped grow the area, the image of the area, bring people you know, together with, with uh, television, serving our area. And so this part of the state, in my opinion, had always lacked that television coverage. Mike was saying, you know, I think we can make a TV station in this town. And I hesitated a little bit. I said, boy, I don't know. That's tough. It takes a lot of time, a lot of talent, a lot of money, a lot of equipment. I don't know if we could pull it off. And I think that's all Mike needed to hear because it never left his mind. And here we are many years later, it finally happened. The news continues on News Channel Nebraska Evening Edition with Mike Flood. Beer stores in White Clay may have... So I'm from Norfolk originally. I uh, was born and raised here and uh, attended Norfolk Catholic Schools. When I was in grade school, uh, I started a neighborhood newspaper on my street called the Greenlawn Times and I went around and got subscribers and then eventually got advertisers and I did that in, you know, from third grade to seventh or eighth grade. You know, people ask, actually subscribed to it and it was, it was quite a deal. But then he moved on to radio in high school and everybody knew who Mike was then. When I was in high school at 15, I got a job offer at the radio stations across the town, WJG, and I started working after school and then I worked overnights and I took out the trash and I was on the radio and I got the commercials ready for the next day and then, uh, you know, continued doing that through my high school career. I got a job uh, at a commercial uh, country station in Mishawaka, Indiana, which is right next to South Bend. And I did mornings as a morning sidekick known as Sideshow Mike. When I got out of college, went to work at B100, big country radio station. And then in 96, this young kid came to get an, uh, a part-time job and it was Mike. He was at Notre Dame at the time and just missed radio. He came to this job, drove to this job interview in an ambulance. He and his buddies had an ambulance as their uh, fun vehicle. So that's what he came. And our morning guy was just, thought that was hilarious. So he said, I have to have him on the morning show. And he was the fun guy. And, and he did that for several years till he was done with college. And then when he came back to law school, we hired his best friend, Dave Amick, and Dave became Daredevil Dave. I went up to South Bend, Indiana, and took a TV job at WNDU, which is the NBC affiliate in South Bend. And while I was there, through a mutual friend, I was told about a guy named Mike Flood, who they thought I would just get along very well with. He's from Nebraska, he likes radio, he's a funny guy. Well, all of a sudden, I meet the guy, and about two weeks later, we become roommates. And from there, uh, it just kind of uh, blossomed into more than a friendship. It, it blossomed into talking about ideas of how we would run a radio station and then all of a sudden uh, Mike found one to build. Well I like to tell everyone Mike convinced me this was paradise because people question how did you end up in Nebraska? I didn't grow up here. He and I started talking and I said well do you have anybody to help you with the sales side of it and he's like well no and so I came out and met and he showed me around and then I came on as the sales manager at the time. During my first year of law school I found out about a license in Albion, Nebraska uh, KUSO, and I was able to find some investors and put that on the air after my second year of law school, US 92. And uh, from there, just started building my business. Ten years ago, I believe it was, we had someone leave the morning show on US 72 and we were coming into our ratings period. It was actually right about this time and we needed somebody to fill in. I said, well, I'll fill in until we get someone hired. That was 10 years ago. Uh, and that was with uh, Dave Amick and we worked together for many years. And then when he chose to move on into some other areas, we uh, brought in Austin Haygood. I needed a new job. I didn't know if I was going to stay in the business or what. So I called 
I sent out a bunch of uh, applications and Mike Flood called me back the next day. And so I'm on the phone and I was like, Norfolk, where is that? And so I'm trying to figure out where even I applied. They tried, they got me up, I think uh, we talked on a Wednesday. They flew me up on a Friday, took me out to a Lee Bryce concert at Divots that Saturday, got the job, flew home Sunday, and I was back here in a week in a U-Haul. It's fun. It's uh, I get paid to talk to my friend every morning, and sometimes you hit gold, and sometimes it's terrible. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I have radio stations right now in Norfolk, Nebraska City, Fairbury, and Beatrice, and Omaha, and then TV stations in Sioux City, Norfolk, Columbus, Beatrice, Grand Island, Lincoln, and soon Omaha, and so. You know, the broadcasting business is, isn't just radio anymore. Broadcasting is the content business. Mike is an awesome guy. Mike is hilarious. I actually wish we had him more. I was telling you this day, I wish we had him more in the newsroom because he's so fun to work with. He cracks jokes. And I love that Mike likes breaking news. Mike knows when there is a fire before it starts burning. Mike knows when there is like a robbery before it takes place. He knows everything before it happens. So they got one going in. Oh, this is going into the there, ambulance. Yep, so there's there. one of them. Then there's the other one right there. Well, there aren't many independent stations in the nation. You know, what I'm doing today with New Channel Nebraska is like what TV did before the networks got big. So in the 1950s, when the Sioux City TV stations or the Omaha TV stations had children's shows and they had a cooking show and they had uh, a sewing hour and you know they entertained themselves with local content all day long. That's similar to what I'm doing today. I always hear people saying how much they like the local news, that they don't always have to watch KTIV even though we do have a partnership with them. They like seeing what's going on in Norfolk. And it's great to have a TV station like that. What Mike Flood has done is tremendous. It's, it's awesome. We have a platform where we can kind of spread the word. So we're going to Bloomfield, and we're going to Hardington, and we're going to Wayne, and we're going to O'Neill and Atkinson, uh, not just for news, but for sports, and places that have never seen coverage before. We had almost a 1,000 people watching a web stream of a game involving North Central High School. That's Kippahaw County. That's way out there. Not a lot of, I mean, that's, we had viewership that rival the population of those towns out there. Our kids are just as important to focus on in high school sports as the kids that live in a larger city. They have a story to tell, and we are able to tell it. The last time Norfolk High was successful was 1987. I think there's only been five champions from outside of Omaha Lincoln since 1960. And so when you have a group of young men that demonstrate a playing ability to go down there and win, and not just win, but win everything, that's a story theme that I think fits in line with our television station uh, for two reasons. One is we have been covering them all season, so we're not Johnny Come Lately. And two, it was fun to see the second smallest Class A school in the state win it all. And so... You know, that morning of the, of the game, knowing that they had a good chance to win, um, or believing that they had a very good chance to win, just given their skill level, I'm, you know, we put that together. And um, I think it was as unforgettable for the kids as it was for the rest of the community. And the school put the pep rally together. And all in, you know, one night, it was, you know, it was must-see TV for all the right reasons. I'm out here in O'Neill off Highway 20, giving you some snow coverage of this year's first storm. You know, severe weather is as Nebraska as it comes. I mean, people are built for it. They love it. They, people like to know where it's at. It has an impact on our crops. It has an impact on our schools, our kids, our homes. Um, most of the time, its impact is negligible. But as we saw with the Pilgrim tornadoes, sometimes it's devastating. Power lines have been knocked down. We've seen a few buildings destroyed as well. This is this is the real deal, folks. You know, if something like that happened in where I grew up in Michigan, you could turn on the TV and you'd have a weatherman and he'd be standing in front of a radar screen. And this tornado, the story of that tornado would be told in different swirling colors on a map of the state of Michigan. And that's it. And maybe the next day there'd be some blips on what the damage was like. 
When that happened here, we dropped all programming and it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We had people uh, on their way to the town. We had people covering out storm spotting. We had people sending pictures of it back to the station at the time. We were telling people at the time, this is for real. We can see what has happened. We had storm spotters out there saying, I am seeing two tornadoes side by side on the ground right now, get in the basement. And I've had people come up to me and say, in no uncertain terms that we saved lives that night by our coverage. The Weather Nation's Tim Jones says they were all about the people and helping the people. Nebraskans as a whole are resilient, as are people that are affected by uh, tragedies like this. Reporting for News Channel Nebraska in Norfolk, Rachel Urbanski. I am doing what I like to do. I like to be in the broadcasting business. I like to be in um, you know, the law business and the politics business. Those aren't hobbies for me. They are hobbies, but they're also my professional choices. And so I was fortunate to find a line of work that matched my interests. Mike's impact in the community, in the state, and even in the nation is, is a lot more than any of us really realize. And, you know, I guess I'm privileged to be on the inside and kind of see more of what he's done over the years, but he's done a lot of things a lot of people don't even know about that have helped people. The great visionary. I would have never in my life had the foresight to think when I was in my early 20s, I'm going to start a radio station. Like ever since I've met Mike, I've always looked at his life accomplishments at my age and always fell so incredibly short. Like I'm like, here I am, you know, working as a DJ. This guy already owned a radio station, you know, and it's just always kind of, but he's a, but he's a good guy to chase because he kind of keeps you on your game. So I'm looking this up and I'm just like, this dude's in politics, he's in radio, you, you know, he's starting TV stations. Wow. And I watched nine hours of Netflix today. You know, it just... Um, actually 20 years that I've known Michael now and he is, he, he has a mind that I always don't want to be in because I think it's got to be just chaos because he has so many ideas and this is his vision and everything has been his vision and he'll call in the middle of the night or I'll call on a Saturday and he's like I was thinking that we should do this what do you think about TV I'm like what I'm like Mike I will go with you and that has been exactly our story for 17 years of business together without uh, further ado Mr. Mike Flood ladies and gentlemen This part of the state has a great number of stories that we can tell. The more local we are, the more relevant we'll be. And you know, that's really the mission of NCN. Where will we be in 15 years? I have no idea. Just surviving the first 15 months have been a task in and of itself. There aren't many of us in America that do this kind of work, and certainly not on the level that we do. You know, our model will change and ebb and flow as consumers want certain things covered and they, they don't need certain things. And, I want NCN to be a voice for Nebraska, especially the rural areas, for a long time. You know, that's my interest and that's the brand I think we're building. And I'd like to know that it was still as popular in 15 years as it is today. In my opinion, I've lived in a lot of different towns and I'm not pandering to people from this town. This is the greatest town in America. Norfolk is like the last surviving piece of America, I think. It was, you can go to the coast and you can go to Texas and everywhere, and it's just not the same as it is here. And there's a lot to be said in the fact that you can leave your car running at a gas station and no one's gonna like get in it or drive away with it. I mean, it's wonderful. And Norfolk, if they embrace you, it is, I mean, it, I feel like I grew up here. I've been here four years and I feel like I grew up here, which is kind of weird. I relate more with Norfolk and people like telling stories from the 90s in Norfolk. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't there, but I loved it. And then so like, you know, it's weird, but I love it.